In the 1830s, a German naturalist named Renus was arrested in San Fernando, Chile for heresy. What was he accused of? He claimed he could turn caterpillars into butterflies. Just two centuries back, people could get in trouble for things we now consider common knowledge. But here's an interesting twist. Did you know that not every caterpillar transforms into a butterfly or moth? That is, not all of them are destined to flap their wings. Some of them take a detour in their metamorphosis journey. They decide not to sprout wings. But let's take it one step at a time. First of all, what's metamorphosis? In a nutshell, it's the way some animals go through a body transformation post-birth, evolving into completely different forms. People have been trying to make sense of this process for ages. It doesn't always work smoothly. Some scientists think metamorphosis appeared way back when crawling and flying species made it. How do they imagine that happened? In truth, things weren't exactly as we might imagine. Around 280 million years ago, insects used to just hatch as tiny adults from eggs and were totally okay with it. Yet somewhere between 280 and 300 million years back, a few of them decided to mix things up. They started growing up in a way that made them look nothing like their parents. Oddly enough, this turned out to be beneficial. Young and old insects weren't fighting for the same resources anymore. See for yourself, caterpillars eat leaves to fuel their metamorphosis, but butterflies just drink nectar sugary water. Witnessing the makeovers, the other insects decided to join the club. As a result, today about 65% of all animal species on the planet undergo metamorphosis like butterflies, moths, wasps, flies, and a bunch of others. All right, let's say we got the whole transformation thing figured out. It's a necessary evolutionary process that came about over time to make sure there are more bugs around, but then how do we stop it? Just tweak the genes. And it's really simple. Well, depends on who you ask. The gene called broad plays a key role in the caterpillar's journey to becoming a butterfly, guiding it through the chrysalis stage and full metamorphosis. If you knock out this gene, the caterpillar won't go through the chrysalis phase and won't transform into a butterfly. And if you think that something like that necessarily requires a mad scientist, a lab, and other tools to interfere with the natural order of things, well, nope. Even an ordinary wasp can do this kind of genetic engineering. When a caterpillar first comes out, it's like a hungry little vacuum cleaner. For days or even weeks before it goes into its cocoon, all it does is eat. It devours heaps of plants, way more than its own weight, and just keeps getting bigger. Take monarch butterfly caterpillars, for instance. In just two weeks, they swell up to a whopping 20 times their original size. Imagine a human baby growing to the height of a three-story building over the same time. The caterpillar needs all that energy to pull off its magical transformation. And here's the thing, as it's chowing down on leaves, it's totally clueless that it's being watched. The little parasitic wasp, Cotesia, bides its time for the perfect moment, when the caterpillars are at their most vulnerable right before metamorphosis begins. At this point, they can't put up a fight, and the top layer of their cocoon hasn't toughened up yet. That's when the wasp lays its eggs. When the cocoon toughens up, it becomes a durable shield for protecting 15 to 50 eggs, from which baby wasps will then hatch. But the real black magic unfolds at a minuscule molecular level. To ensure the caterpillar's immune system doesn't fight back, each egg is coated with brocovirus, intricately embedded into the caterpillar's cells. Can you feel it? This is where the wonders of genetic engineering come into play. And when the baby wasps finally come out, the magic keeps on working. The virus that initially acted as a shield for them ends up messing with the caterpillar's behavior. After going through this nasty experience, it looks like their only option is to crawl towards their own end. If they survive, it's back to the eating routine, followed by pupation and metamorphosis. Instead, the altered cells in the caterpillar steer it towards weaving a silky cushion for future wasps. This is where the caterpillar stays. It won't transform into a moth anymore because it had a change of heart. Now it's like a zombie guard shielding its killers for roughly 10 more days. Talk about messing with things on a molecular level. And here's the thing, humans aren't any part of that. Yet the parasitic wasp first has to find the right caterpillar to lay its eggs. Surprisingly, this task isn't as hard as it sounds, thanks to a peculiar ally, the cabbage. The cabbage hires killer wasps as its bodyguards against Ooh. butterflies. I agree, it sounds like the plot of some crazy second-rate science fiction movie, but new research shows that something like this can actually happen in nature. 
Cabbage releases chemical distress signals when pests or even lawnmowers attack it. If you imagine cabbage yelling, mayday, mayday, you're not the only one. Just so you know, this trick isn't just for cabbage. It works for its family members, too. Take black mustard, for instance. When it detects a caterpillar eating it, it gives off a bunch of smelly, volatile substances. That smell brings in parasitic wasps that take care of those caterpillars. It won't fix the damage, but it's kind of a weird delayed karma it's better than nothing now circling back to viruses there's more to explore apart from the virus that sneaks into the caterpillar through wasps there's another type this one doesn't require any middleman it reprograms its victims all by itself take a look when gypsy moth caterpillars feel good they go up the trees at night to munch on leaves and then come back down in the morning to stay safe from predators during the day it's a regular thing for lots of animals yet there's this virus that figured out how to mess with caterpillars genes making them act in a way that are pretty much against their own interests these little creatures suddenly stop caring about food or getting ready to pupate this virus from the baccalovirus family forces the caterpillars into the treetops and reprograms them to stay there until honestly it's like a scene straight out of a horror movie the caterpillar just hangs out, not moving at all, while the virus feasts on it from the inside, making more viral cells. Eventually, the unfortunate insect liquefies into a formless, contagious goo. It drips down from the top of the tree, infecting the leaves and then the bugs that snack on those leaves, and the cycle repeats again. Sure, butterflies can be bothered by other pathogens too, and one of them is a single-celled organism. That is, protozoan. <coughs> As simple as it may be, Ophriocystis electroscira, or OE for convenience, is a real menace. It survives in the wild as spores. Adult butterflies pick them up from plants or other butterflies carry them on their abdomens and then lay eggs that are already doomed. After the caterpillar comes out, that's when the parasites start multiplying inside it. The real trouble kicks in during the pupal stage. Just about three days before the adult hatches, a bunch of new parasites start forming, and they stop the butterfly. They just won't let it out. Metamorphosis is already a tricky journey, and these spores make it impossible. The butterfly ends up stuck in the cocoon, unable to escape, and many don't make it out alive. Some desperate butterflies manage to break free, but their wings get messed up in the process, leaving them unable to fly. If a butterfly is exceptionally lucky, it might avoid losing its flying abilities, but it still doesn't fare well. It won't go far, and sadly, it won't survive the migration. Guess what? Butterflies have this kind of cool trick up their wings. They somehow figured out how to heal themselves. Yeah, butterflies. These little creatures with wings. Monarch butterflies use special plants as medicine to help their babies out in advance. The caterpillars eat lots of different types of milkweed plants, and some of them have powerful chemicals in them. These chemicals kill the parasites bothering the butterflies, and as a result, the healthy butterfly ends up with thriving offspring. Also, when an infected butterfly is given a choice between two types of milkweed, the regular one and the kind that helps with parasites, it picks the latter. How and why this happens remains a mystery to everyone, except perhaps the butterflies themselves. If a caterpillar gets stuck in its caterpillar phase, can it just stay that way forever? Well, not really. There are a few reasons why a caterpillar might not transform into a butterfly or moth, and they all come down to the fact that the caterpillar doesn't make it through the process. This could be due to not having enough food, some kind of birth defects, or being in the wrong conditions. In simpler terms, choosing to remain a caterpillar isn't something the caterpillar consciously does. Taking it slow with metamorphosis is, frankly, a bad idea. During its life, an insect goes through life stages in a certain order. If a caterpillar takes too long to become a butterfly, it's not a good sign. <laughs> to start, caterpillars need to eat a lot. Because natural resources don't bounce back too quickly, a slow-going caterpillar might end up hungry when it runs out of food. And when the next cold season hits, there won't be as much vegetation, leading to the same result. The second frustrating thing is that, sadly, insects exist solely to have babies. If a caterpillar's taking its sweet time to become a butterfly, chances are it won't find a mate. All its buddies have already paired up, laid eggs, and clocked out. By the time it transforms into a butterfly, the dating pool is empty. Not to mention that the cocoon or chrysalis serves as a shield, keeping it off the radar of hungry predators. This means that if a caterpillar doesn't undergo metamorphosis, it's more likely to end up as a bird snack. 
There's a reason late summer and early fall emerge as the prime time for butterflies. Throughout the summer, caterpillars thrive on an abundance of food, preparing for the upcoming season. As fall sets in and food becomes scarce, butterflies start reproducing, laying eggs to ensure the cycle restarts with the warmth of the next season. Nature has it all figured out. Come cooler fall weather, some butterflies like monarchs head south to bask in the warmth. But here's the catch. Most of these insects die due to the cold. That means the insect struggling with metamorphosis might die from the cold before it can carry on its family line. From nature's standpoint, its life would have no meaning. None at all. The caterpillar eats so much to get energy both for the metamorphosis and to lay eggs. Nectar, which feeds adult butterflies, is enough only for flying around. All other nutrients are obtained by the insect while still in caterpillar form. So all this effort for nothing? Poof! Luckily, it's rare to see caterpillars taking it slow with the metamorphosis in the wild. So far, we haven't stumbled upon any instances of tardy caterpillars. However, there's this one insect that needs a whopping seven years to hit adulthood. Not because it's sluggish, but because the poor creature has no other options. Meet the Arctic Woolly Bear Moth, a small and rather plain-looking gray butterfly that spends its entire life in the high Arctic, specifically Greenland and Canada above the Arctic Circle. Despite its unassuming appearance, this moth pulls off some truly remarkable feats not many are aware of. Once it hatches from its egg, this species caterpillar, like all others, has to eat enough to transform into a moth. The issue, however, is that these summers in these areas are so short, there's hardly any vegetation. So the caterpillar struggles to gather the necessary energy in just one year. While most caterpillars would die in this situation, this particular one cleverly stretches the process over seven long years. So these caterpillars basically eat arctic greens for just about 5% of their life. And that happens only in June. For the rest of the time, they're on standby, patiently waiting for food to pop up. They've mastered the art of chilling in the cold. And honestly, I'm a bit jealous. By the way, seven years is still kind of short. When food's really scarce, that period can stretch sometimes up to 14 years. Tough choice. Okay, not really tough, but important. Researchers have unraveled the mystery behind how parasitic wasps select their prey. Since the parasite's development relies entirely on the caterpillar, the host's quality is an important factor. It's essential that the host is not shared with any other wasps, otherwise the survival of the offspring is at risk. Scientists believe that female wasps, when observing a caterpillar, can instantly figure out if there are foreign eggs inside and can even count how many. They appear to scan the caterpillar using their ovipositor, the organ that later lays eggs inside the body. At the tip of the ovipositor, there's something like taste buds that provide the wasp with all the answers it needs. Interestingly, this skill isn't innate but learned, specifically in mother wasps. Who teaches them this and how is still a mystery, though. How Wasps Domesticated Viruses as I mentioned earlier in the video, parasitic wasps pack a punch by carrying viruses that act like bodyguards for their eggs against the host's immune system. Just a quick reminder in case you missed it. Well, a fresh study reveals that these wasps have been capturing viruses into their DNA over the eons as a survival strategy. It's like domesticated the viruses. Turns out organisms have this knack for embracing viruses that are actually helpful. Evolution's got some sneaky moves, huh? So while humans were domesticating cats and dogs, wasps were doing something similar, but with viruses. Well, it actually makes sense. Who else is there to domesticate when you're that small? Warning colors. Turns out parasites have learned to draw something like identification marks on the caterpillars that keep predators from making a meal out of them. That's what nematode worms do. Once inside the caterpillar, they release thousands of glowing bacteria that gradually kill the caterpillar, turning its tissues into a nutritious soup. Several generations of worms will live, feed, mate, and die in one dead caterpillar before breaking free. There's a risk that their home could become a predator's dinner. To avoid that, the nematodes talk to bacteria, convincing them to help make the caterpillar appear a lot less tasty, maybe even a bit red and slightly glowing. I mean, who'd want to eat something like that? Caterpillar versus everyone In Borneo, scientists stumbled upon a caterpillar that's basically unstoppable on its journey to becoming a butterfly. 
This unique insect crafts a tough multi-layered cocoon using tree resin, possibly making it poisonous. Scientists think it might be the only insect out there with this incredible skill as they haven't spotted any other species doing it. Before turning into a pupa, the caterpillar makes its way to the bark of a plant known as Vatica Rassic. It uses the gooey tree sap-like resin to create a protective cocoon, keeping itself safe from unwelcome visitors. And since the resin is toxic, it's unlikely any animal will want to taste it. See you later.